Welcome, welcome, my friends, to yet another edition of More Bad News, uh, brought to you as always by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel's Challenge, smoke camels for 30 days and see for yourself what a difference camels can make in your life. Well, my friends, it's been another week of very bad news. And what I wanted to focus on a little bit today, well, well I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I, you know, uh, I've got thoughts, but I've not organized anything. Whether this works or not, I don't know. Um, I've been dealing with uh, anti-Semitism uh, all of my adult career. Uh, as an anti-racist and, you know, and civil rights activist and, you know, running a, an organization uh, that uh, uh, targeted uh, racist academics. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I was always under threat of, uh, of legal, of libel suits, uh, because I was calling people Nazis and, you know, they don't like to be called Nazis. Um, and, uh, and I was labeling, uh, uh, you know, the Pioneer Fund, you know, this is, you know, millions of dollars. They, they had lawyers, the, the head of the Pioneer Fund, Harry Weir, uh, was an attorney. And, uh, and I know for a fact, that he, he, I caused him indigestion. I mean, as a, um, uh, and uh, so there was the, there was a threat always through my career, uh, that I would be sued. Um, I, uh, I had, uh, uh, very good uh, 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 representation throughout. I mean, I always, I always had, uh, uh, I was, I was in the civil rights community, and uh, and there were, uh, and there uh, were attorneys at hand uh, if I need them. And in, and in the end of my career, uh, which went out in a blaze of anti-Semitism, um, uh, uh, I had a very, very good. Uh, legal support, uh, you know. I mean, I sued the university, and uh, you know, and uh, uh, and uh, and I had uh, a, a full legal team. I mean, just just did a, a magnificent job in representing me. I'm very grateful to them. Uh, that's fire, uh, and they're certainly worth your support. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I, the the uh, windows of my car were smashed. Swastika is painted on the corner uh, uh, mailbox. Um, uh, death threats, uh, you know, just uh, you know, I this is this is how I live. So and uh, and uh, I always believed uh, that um, uh, the Nazis were a really serious problem. Other people thought when you know when I was <laughs> uh, I was in high school, I already. Uh, uh, was obsessed with the growth of the Ku Klux Klan and you know and 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 uh, and uh, and racism. Um, and then when I started my academic career and I told people that I was studying eugenics and I was interested in academic racism, people looked at me like I was crazy. What kind of a you know uh, you you, <laughs> you believe that? Oh, you're, you're worried about Nazis? Are you worried about Nazis? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay. So, um, and where do you think you're going to go with that? Um, so uh, for me, uh, there's always been uh, danger and always been threats. Uh, the, uh, uh, the higher my profile, the greater the threat. Uh, so that when I was on ABC World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and over the bell curve, you know, which came out and, I, and there were 25 million people saw me rant and rage against racism, academic racism. Uh, uh, I got a slew of death threats, and one of them was a uh, a phone that it was really vicious. Uh, this guy called my son, picked up the phone. He was only ten years old, and this guy told my son that he was going to kill him, uh, chop him up into pieces, and mail him back to his father in boxes. And my son Isaac, ten years old at the time, put the phone down. And, uh, I um, wrote after going to Israel with my son uh, in 1996 for his bar mitzvah. Uh, that there, there had been an explosion. Uh, the number 18 bus had been blown up on a Sunday morning. And the next Sunday we were in Jerusalem when the number 18 bus was blown up a second time and we were right there. And that day I passed the, the carcass of that number 18 bus uh, with um, uh, uh, workers on cherry pickers uh, scraping body pots off the side of a building for burial. 
And I wrote in my diary, have I brought my son, my only son, the son that I love, Isaac, to this holy place to offer him up as a burnt offering? I named him Isaac because it seemed to me that that's what it took to bring a Jewish child into the world meant that you, any Jewish child, you were taking the Jewish child to the mountaintop and, and saying, oh, here, uh, I hope you don't want my son as a burnt offering. So, uh, but slowly, as time went on and the situation deteriorated, my career took off and my life always improved with the downward trend. The, the more racism there was, the more, you know, people turned to me for, well, you know, you specialize in racism. So, uh, you know, uh, this is the topic of the day. Um, but over the years, what's happened is that, for example, uh, in the synagogue, uh, they've gone, they have a, a security detail, uh, security cameras, armed guards. Uh, so, so things have really gotten much more dangerous for Jews as time went on. Uh, and today it's astonishing um, how uh, the war uh, has uh, ginned up you know, it's just, I mean, I see it all around me. It's just, um, uh, I don't know who listens to this, but I, I do, you know, my, I, on my Facebook page, uh, someone uh, who is on my friends list uh, referred to um, uh, uh, Israeli sadism. You know, I, I posted a, a little piece from my uh, dear friend, Aviva Cantor, who was saying, pointing out in a, in a letter to an editor, that it's unfortunate that the left doesn't understand that, that Hamas has done nothing for the Palestinians. Um, you know, they uh, 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 Gaza could have been a, an incredible place. I mean, you know, they could have had luxury hotels. They could have, uh, you know, but instead it was all hate and and destruction. Um, so um, you had on both sides, you know, the peacemakers were assassinated. Uh, and and hate overcame uh, the desire. We've you know been fighting for years. I I mentioned this before too that you know that I've always been supportive of uh, of uh, programs like uh, Stand Together, which brings together you know the different you know Israel and the Middle East is not just Jews and Arabs, uh, and all diversity in in this region has been crushed. Uh, the Christians have been. Destroy. I mean, so the, you know, the, I have this. I mentioned this thirty-year uh, genocide in, you know, in, in Turkey, where in Asia Minor, the uh, the number of Christians was twenty percent in eighteen ninety four and two percent in nineteen twenty four. Um, throughout the region, the Yazidi, um, every minority in the region has been assaulted, attacked, and 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 their existence threatened, and uh, and 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 the uh, amount of uh, of ability, uh, diversity in the region has been declining. Uh, it's uh, with the rise of these militant uh, nationalist groups, including the Jews. I mean, so it's like, you know, so uh, Sadat so was assassinated, Rabin was assassinated. Uh, so um, uh, uh, John, uh, Paul Beckwith, the uh, uh, climatologist, referred to Israel as pure evil. And perhaps there is pure evil, but it's on, it's, it's humans who appear to me to, uh, I don't know whether we're pure evil, maybe there's an ounce of goodness in the human, in the human species, but we are a, a dreadful species that is extremely destructive. Uh, we're, you know, we're tearing our planet apart. Everything is dying. 10 billion snow crabs, uh, you know, are gone. The Armenians are gone. I mean, what do you need to know that it is that the pure evil is us? So uh, I'm not an activist anymore. I'm not a warrior, and and I'm and I spend most of my time now with trees, 
And, <laughs> you know, if you spend your time with trees, you have a different perspective. They're not in a hurry. We went up to uh, Lake Superior. Someone said, commented on my thing. Oh no, all the trees there, you know, are are only 120 years old. The oldest tree is in Munising is 100 and something years old. And so I looked it up. And said, you know, some of those trees on the crags, you know, were never harvested. They are the, the oldest tree there is 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 thought to be 1,400 years old. There are many thousand year old trees. You're there with trees that have been around for a while. They have a different view of the planet and of life. So uh, I, me and the trees, we're thinking that maybe now is a good time, you know, for, for uh, instead of war, just uh, sink your roots in, study Gemara, you know, Davin, you know, so I spend my days in prayer and study. That's what I do. And I'm not as agitated uh, as many people around me. But this much I can see very clearly that globally, uh, Jews everywhere are feeling less secure. I'm not so sure, you know, whether the Jews for justice in Palestine, whether uh, uh, Judith Butler uh, feels this, I, I, you know, I, I just don't know. Um, uh, and my show was called Sympathy for the Devil. Uh, back when I was teaching, you know, was, uh, uh, <laughs> and I had my students in their in the terrorism class nominate Osama bin Laden for a Nobel Peace Prize. I explained to them that more people love and respect and cherish uh, the memory of Osama bin Laden than love and respect and cherish uh, uh, the, uh, George Bush. Um, in my European history, I had the students, you know, you, you had to uh, write a paper praising the Nazis. Uh, it wasn't hard to do. I said, I told them, look, you know, this is not so hard to do. Just look at, at, at Time Magazine, Man of the Year, Adolf Hitler. Before the war started, everybody, there was tremendous admiration. And you can look at their war against cancer, you know, a full generation before we ever uh, came to the conclusion that cigarettes cause cancer, the Nazis were having a major public health campaign. They reduced the amount of people smoked. It wasn't a Gestapo campaign where they threatened people's lives if he didn't stop smoking. It was a regular public service educational program. You know, look, the Fuhrer doesn't smoke. It's terrible for your health. We've done all kinds of research. They connected it to cancer and all kinds of diseases. They were right on target. One of the people that I respect uh, and cherish and who has been very important in my life, Martin Heidegger, was a Nazi from the go and he never recanted, he never relented. And I knew that. Judith Butler supports um, the opposition I don't know what, what she thinks of Hamas, but she certainly uh, is uh, is an uh, is an opponent uh, of the of the Jewish state, um, and is for you know uh, Jews for justice in Palestine. I think she's uh, you know, uh, and I and, and I have tremendous respect for Judith Butler. I tried to get my students to have some sympathy for the devil. Uh, and to realize that uh, if there are criminals out there, um, it, it's it's us, it's us. Uh, nobody has the right to be self righteous. So um, uh, I've said this before. Uh, my heart goes out for all the suffering, but these are dark times. And all we're going to have is more bad news. And the only advice I have to offer is take the camels challenge. Smoke camels for 30 days and see for yourself what a difference camels can make in your life. So my friends, that's it until next week where we'll have another edition 
uh, more bad news.